Why did you want to be a cosmonaut? This is a very complex issue. I'd say that as a kid, I didn't want to become a cosmonaut. As far as I remember, I've always wanted to be a pilot. I think there was an event that probably strengthened my desire to become a pilot. That's when I was 12 years old, about 12. I jumped with a parachute for the first time. Actually, I wasn't 12 at the moment, not yet. And what was interesting was that I had to weigh no less than 50 kilos because the parachute system, which was in operation at that time, in order for it to perform, the weight of the individual had to be no less than 50 kilos. But I didn't weigh 50 kilos back then. But probably the fact that I liked physics and mathematics played its part. What I did, I added sand to my pockets, to my boots, and so I did come to weigh 50 kilos. So I went ahead and I jumped. So this is probably one of the major, maybe the only turning points. Вывело меня на то, что я попал в центр подготовки космонавтов еще до отряда космонавтов. Я несколько лет прослужил по много парашютных прыжков, потому что я и занимался парашютом, и полторы тысячи of uh, parachute jumps on my record. So I was an instructor and uh, I was dealing with uh, all these extreme activities and uh, specific preparation activities, uh, survival, flights, jumps, uh, hydro, G, microgravity environment. So this is something I had been dealing with. So becoming part of the cosmonaut corps is a, a very logical uh, item in this chain of events in my professional activity. I thought I was ready, I felt prepared, I felt I had the knowledge, and I thought that maybe I'll be of more, I'll, I'll make more contribution as part of the cosmonaut corps. Ну, самое главное, почему я пошел. And I didn't venture so far as to say that this is probably the main thing why I became a cosmonaut. Когда я подал рапорт в отряд космонавтов, я Besides, when I was uh, going to become a cosmonaut, I, I did realize that it's going to be a very tough job and I won't be at home very often and my family will probably be offended sometimes. But as I said, that I believe every human being needs to contribute something to society and to the environment, and I thought this is something I could uh, do better in. I'd like to learn a little bit more about Evgeny Tarelkin. Uh, start by telling me about your hometown and, and what it was like for you as you grew up, apparently in several places in the, in the Soviet Union, yes? Yes. Yes, you're right. You see, my parents were in the military. My father was a military pilot. My mother was a military doctor. So получилось так, что, в общем-то, родился я за Байкале. Это город Чита. I was born in the Baikal region. This is the city of Chita. It's not far away from Lake Baikal. It's in the far east of Russia. Very beautiful location. The Taiga region. So I was born in Chita. Then we switched our places uh, of accommodation very often. We used to live close to Mongolia in Jida. That's why my father was uh, serving. Then I've switched places many more times. 
Это Подмосковье, город say, Дмитров. Despite the fact that I was born in Chita, I think my hometown is a small town in the Moscow region, Dmitrov. That's where my father was born. Most of my family members live there. That's a very beautiful town as well. По крайней мере, сейчас я стараюсь много для него делать. And I try to do as much as I can. И где-то там перед школьниками выступаю. Try to talk to school children as often as I can. And my father, same thing. My parents, after my father retired from the military, they came to live in this town too. My father is now retired, but he is still very active, and he works very closely with the young people. Где он помогает? молодым людям a club, в том, что a club for youth, их, отвлекает от улицы. And uh, he's doing his job тем, trying to bring them to make them learn new things, such as fly a helicopter, to make parachute jumps, ну вот. and uh, ну, other things too. I for now live uh, close to Star City. With my family together, I'm married. I have two daughters. Вот, ну дочке старшей десять, младшей пять. My elder daughter is ten years old. The younger one is five. Ну прекрасные дочки. Единственное. Very good girls. Мы с женой очень хотели второго ребенка мальчика. But Рассчитывали там, подсчитывали, но появилась и, видимо, от этого желания, чтобы был девочка по папе, но вторая папина дочка, это вот, то есть получилась старшая принцесса, а младшая это такой болезнь. Прекрасная девочка, не имеет ничего. But overall, they are great daughters. I'm very proud of them. I hope they're proud of me. Ну коротко о жене. Жена с Новосибирска. And my wife is from Novosibirsk. That's in the Sibir region too. Там родители ее живут. Her parents still live there. А сейчас она с девочками как раз находится там. And currently, she is right there together with my daughters in Novosibirsk. Она бухгалтер по образованию. She's an accountant by education. But Right now, she stays at home. Do you think that the fact that you grew up in a family where your parents were in the military and you moved from place to place influenced your choice of careers? You influenced you to to go into the military too? Ну, да, скорее всего повлияло, потому что yes. I think it did have an impact. Because when I was a kid, graduating from school, I had a choice. Either to follow the military path or to become a doctor. Откровенно говоря, я не знаю. Скорее всего, из меня был бы неплохой доктор. I can't really say for sure, but I have a presumption I'd make a good doctor. But back then, I opted for the military. I have no regret whatsoever. No, уверен, что если бы я был врачом, я был бы хорошим врачом. But I'm positive that if I were a doctor, I'd be a good one too. Tell me a little bit about the 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 path then for you. I understand that by the time you graduated from high school, you were living near Moscow. But tell me about the the different schools that you went to and the steps in your career that led you to working at the Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Center, mm -hmm. and then ultimately to become a cosmonaut. Ну да, я поменял очень много школ. Yes, I did switch lots of schools. Наверное, школ пять. When a school kid, I'd say five schools. Честно говоря, я не помню. I don't even remember correctly. My graduation took place at the Chkalovsky, a town that's close to Star City. That's where my father was finishing his years in the military. But now, as I look back, I find out this is school number 14. It's named after Yuri Gagarin. And now the school is very proud of me. And I'm an often visitor, often guest to the school. I try to 
to help the school as much as I can. And after graduating, I went to a military school. After which, I went to the military academy at Monina. And then to the Krasnodar region, to the Yeysk Aviation School. It was uh, for fighter pilots and uh, bombarder pilots. Then again back to the Gagarin Military Pilot Academy. So you see, somehow I kept going closer to the Gagarin Cosmic Training Center just by the names of the entities and education units. And after graduating from there, I became an instructor at the Gagarin Center. And then in 2003, after passing the exams and stuff, I became a cosmonaut. In 2005, I became the test cosmonaut. That's why I mean to say that I finished the general cosmic preparation classes. And now, again, the finishing touch is my becoming ready for the flight. So, that's the summary. So, do I understand then that the, the course of the several different uh, schools and academies that you went to, that you went directly into uh, as an instructor uh, of cosmonauts rather than into an operational role in the Air Force? Currently, when I look back, I see that somehow I kept turning towards the cosmonaut path. I don't know whether it was God or fate or, I don't know, destiny. I remember that I had always wanted to be a pilot, but somehow I found myself in the cosmonaut core, and I'm a cosmonaut. Here I am. When you were an instructor at the uh, Cosmonaut Training Center, what were you teaching? What what uh, what disciplines or, or what subjects were you uh, an instructor? Mostly practical activities, cosmonaut preparation for parachuting, instructor. You probably know when a Russian cosmonaut is being prepared, he or she goes through the mandatory parachuting exercises. So it's not really to make a, a parachute uh, trooper out of a cosmonaut, but it's more in order to prepare the cosmonaut to, to be ready to perform the task set under stressful conditions. But for the purpose of uh, the cosmonaut being able to do all those tests during the free fall period, he or she needs to know uh, how to work with the parachute, what to do in case of an autonomous situation, how to set up the backup parachute. And in addition, zero G flights. L 39, this is uh, an aircraft flight. I participated there as part of the survival instructor group. Because again, all cosmos go through uh, survivals, winter survival, survival in the desert, sea survival. This is something I was busy with prior to becoming part of the cosmonaut corps. I was the one who prepared cosmonauts and astronauts who came to the Gagarin training center in order to prepare for their flights. Do you think that it was your proximity to cosmonauts and astronauts in instructing them in these things that uh, finally made you think, I could be a cosmonaut myself? Probably, yes. As I was teaching somebody, I could see that I was no worse. I could do all of that myself. 
это побудило. Это одна из причин. So I could say yes, that was probably one of the reasons behind my applying for becoming a cosmonaut. So that's why I went in, sat down, and wrote that application. To fly in space as a cosmonaut is to take on a job that carries some risks that most people don't have in their jobs. Uh, but most people would wonder why. So let me ask you, what is it that you believe that people get, or what do we learn as a result of flying people in space that makes it worth taking the risks to do so? Ну, как я уже говорил, The justification of these risks probably lies in the intention of humankind to go forward. And probably one of the major steps now is exploring new planets. And in order to explore this new planet and to understand how to do things, we need to require to acquire the necessary knowledge in the near Earth orbit. So what knowledge can we get here? Say if we want to, when we wanted to fly to Mars, we had to perform a number of experiments in the near-Earth orbit in order to understand how life support systems operate. And in order to understand how all that works, we needed time, dozens of years, to fine-tune these systems, to make them work with uh, no uh, defaults or imperfections. Because there are so many devices that operate in space. Even if we try to simulate all these operations uh, on the ground, if we set the conditions, high temperatures, low temperatures, as far as I know, after these items are flown to the station, they behave in a totally different way. So this low Earth orbit stage is really necessary. But we need to look forward and uh, to think about uh, flying to stars, to other planets, maybe meet our alien brothers there, who knows, something like this. You're getting ready to launch to the International Space Station for Expeditions 33 and 34. Evgeny, what are the goals of your flight and what jobs will you be doing during this mission? Well, my primary task is that I am flight engineer on the ISS. And there are lots of goals, lots of objectives, but the main ones are to perform the tasks set. And the task is uh, to maintain the space station in due condition, so that all the units and all the apparatus perform as they should, and should any of those uh, break down, to be able to fix it. However, there is a second objective, and I'd say that's conducting experiments, scientific experiments. Our expedition will see around 50 experiments. We've studied, we are well prepared for these experiments. I'd say for the major part, these are scientific experiments, uh, like uh, monitoring the Earth's surface. There are also certain experiments uh, in the education area, aimed at children, no matter whether they are Russian children or U.S. children, we'll try to conduct certain education programs. And I hope these are going to be really exciting, at least for the children. Because, uh, well, I say it's my, one of my primary tasks is because I have two kids, two daughters. And that's why I hope I'll do a good job. Because I would say that I know how to conduct myself when around kids, and I'll do my best. 
on the subject of excitement, this is your first space flight. So I'm guessing that there's a certain level of excitement for you about finally getting to uh, to make that trip to space. Yes? Certainly. I've been looking forward to it for the past 10 years. I mean, this flight. Because I've been on the Russian cosmonaut core for 10 years now. What I'm looking forward to, I'd say it's the accomplishment of my dream. And I feel really confident, I feel really well prepared for this flight. And of course, I'm really looking forward to making my own contribution to this expedition, to this mission. I'll do my best not to break something but rather to contribute something yeah, to the project, and I hope I'll be able to. Are you excited about being part of this project in the sense that uh, it's also using the assets and the expertise of so many people from all around the world? Uh, oh, yes, of course, I'm really happy about this. I wouldn't say that I'm nervous or anxious. As, as I mentioned earlier, I feel really well prepared. I feel confident. I feel assured. And uh, I think that I know what I'm going to do and I can navigate uh, through all the machines and apparatus. Yes, I'm happy, but I'm not nervous. You know what there is on the International Space Station. I want you to make sure that the rest of us do, too. Could you give us a little verbal tour of the different modules and, and the facilities that are present currently at uh, what is soon to be your home in space? Well, to paint a general picture, we have the Russian segment and the West segment. In addition, we have uh, a Japanese module, and the European module. But I think I'll start from scratch, that's uh, the Russian segment, and I'll work through the entire station. So the first and the, I'd say the main module in the Russian segment is the service module, the SM module. This is the module that houses all the major units and the apparatus that provide for the crew environment, life support, calm with the ground, scientific experiments, etc. Besides, it houses crew quarters for two Russian crew members. There is also food there which is the most important thing, I'd say, because no one can survive without food or water. Later on, and as I mentioned, I'm painting a big picture. Later on, so we move to FGB. This is a storage facility, so to speak. I wouldn't say it's a garage, but uh, I can say it's a it's a storage area, like a warehouse. And later on we find ourselves on the U.S. segment, and it's Node 1. Node 1 is mainly for food intake. To the left we'll see Node 3. At the bottom, I mean the nadir point, we'll have the PMM module. To the right, you'll see the airlock. And as we move forward, we find ourselves in lab one. That's probably the most important module on the US segment. And I say this because even when we have emergency simulations, I know for sure that this is the module where electricity is powered down at the very last stage. Later on we move to node 2, after, no, after node 1, this is also a home, we have four crew quarters there, and most likely I'll be one of those who have uh, their crew quarters there. 
То, надеюсь, and очень I удобно. Hope this home is a very cozy and convenient one. Ну и дальше, как проходим. And then pass no two. To the left, you will see the Japanese module. And to the right, the European module. Вот, пожалуй, так по крупному. So I've been your guide to the ISS just now. Я пока не был, пока это тут. I haven't been there yet, so this is only theory in theory. После возвращения. Once I get back, I'll be more specific. There are many modules that are devoted to science research, which is the main task for a crew on this space station these days. And you explained to us how what some of those modules are. How do you explain to people the potential for learning new things that the space station offers and, and the value that that knowledge may have for us in the present and in the future? Ну, в основном, лично я стараюсь объяснить, когда мне задают вопросы о science. I, for one, try to say the I'm trying to be as simple as possible. Потому что, в принципе-то, и меня, как космонавта, очень плохо подготовят. And they're able to set and uh, to uh, to carry out certain tasks myself manually. So when asked about experiments, I'm trying to be as short and sweet and concise and brief as possible. I consider all the experiments being carried out on the ISS as experiments that look forward into the future. В основном все эксперименты, я считаю, что должны и они проводятся, это на физические эксперименты, которые будут Допустим, есть такой эксперимент, это кристаллизация, то есть каких экспериментов, вот этих, которые пока вот. Некоторые эксперименты, а, почему проводятся в Поэтому действительно вот эти проведенные эксперименты это я рад, что я являюсь частью этого проекта. You mentioned one of the main areas of the science research is the health of the cosmonauts to find out how living in that environment affects the human body. Could you give me an example or two examples of different things that you're going to be doing during your mission that will help advance that research? Well, as far as I know, there are quite a few experiments that are carried out and directed at aiding people with limited physical ability, so they can be reintegrated into regular normal life. Долговременное пребывание в условиях long-term existence under the conditions of zero-g leaves its trace even on a healthy person such as a cosmonaut. So it is really vital to find that fine path between being a really healthy person at the same time someone has been adapted to Важный шаг как раз и проходит тогда, когда космонавт возвращается на Землю. Важный шаг в том, что как раз космонавт за 
as uh, in the activities that are done started one month prior to landing. A cosmonaut starts training really hard. Moreover, Russian scientists have developed certain devices on the station that aid in this. I say the basic part is the physical exercises, but besides there are certain mechanisms and um, devices that help. So this is something that uh, has a, a huge potential in aiding people with a limited physical abilities. This is a very important stage of uh, helping a cosmonaut getting prepared to return to the ground. Moreover, I'm thinking that uh, what is also important is that when we get back to the ground, the circulation, the mode of circulation, blood circulation in the human body changes too. Because mostly when you are up in space, your blood is concentrated in the upper body. But these experiments on uh, how arteries behave, how blood behaves, how the vestibular apparatus behaves, how the brain behaves during the expedition when on board the station and after landing is also a very important part. You mentioned several different experiments there and earlier you talked about uh, physics experiments and plasma crystals and, and whatnot. In many of these cases you are going to be working with uh, researchers who have uh, who came up with these ideas, with these experiments, uh, people who are from all over the world. That must be an interesting aspect of the mission for you as well. Uh, certainly, we're going to work in close cooperation with the developers. With uh, those people who stand behind these experiments, who developed them. Because uh, in any case, I and uh, my crew members will need the help on the part of the specialist. I'm a military person, and uh, I don't have any direct relationship to science. So I'd say I'd guarantee that I'll need help. Но, по крайней мере, то, тот необходимый минимум, а, который необходим But мне для the very little, проведения этих экспериментов. You mentioned a few minutes ago that a large part of your job is taking care of the station. Uh, give us a sense of what a regular day on the space station is like for a, a flight engineer. What sort of things will you be doing that are not directly related to science experiments? Hmm. No, a usual day on board the station, a normal day, again that's in theory, for now. No. Все, что касается обычного дня, это естественно. But this is something that starts after we wake up. Туалет. Hygiene procedures. Breakfast. Завтрак. Потом. Our daily planning conference, so-called DPC. Вот после этого у нас начинается рабочий день. And after that, our workday starts. Рабочий день состоит, как я уже говорил, в поддержании нормального рабочего состояния станции, стационарного проведения экспериментов, большую часть экспериментов, ну по крайней мере очень много времени занимается вот. Ну, также надо не забывать и про отдых. То есть у нас и общение с родными. 
uh, talking to specialists uh, on these experiments I've talked about before. So this is a somewhat of a psychological relaxation. Uh, so I'd say it's a usual working day. And uh, after dinner, free time, we can watch news, movies, talk to each other. It's not too different from the life on Earth, except for the, uh, the isolation. Oh, yes. But it might be a problem for somebody. As you mentioned, it's one thing that you are isolated. However, as far as I imagine, for somebody from the military, it's not a big deal. I don't see any problem with that at all. In addition to that, if we talk about our crew and the previous increment and the subsequent increment, the folks are just great. And uh, I'm really positive we'll have uh, excellent understanding and cooperation. And in fact, we've been acquainted with each other, even had been acquainted, even before we became part of these specific crews. I'd say that I've known each of my crewmates for five years at least. Now, almost in the very middle of the, your trip to space, will come the uh, Christmas and New Year's holidays. Uh, what are your thoughts about spending those occasions on board the space station? I hope in a very cheerful way. But again, I think it's going to be rather nominal. We're going to watch some Christmas movie. Будет, скорее всего, рождественский. I think we're very likely to have a Christmas dinner, maybe Christmas lunch. Скорее всего, presents, I presume. Вот. Ну и я думаю, немного работы. And I think we'll have to do a bit of work too. Вот. Ну, насколько я понимаю, это будет. I think there shouldn't be anything extraordinary, just the way it is on Earth. The plan for your increment or any other uh, mission on board the space station has to have some flexibility in it to deal with changing circumstances. And that could even include the possibility that you or some of your crewmates might have to go outside to do some work. Uh, as we talk today, what is the plan for spacewalks for your increment? Do you know who would go outside or, or what jobs are, are on the agenda for them? I cannot say for sure right now whether there will be a Russian extravehicular activity, a Russian spacewalk, during our increment. There was a plan to have an EVA, that's a spacewalk, uh, during which Roman Romanenko and I were supposed to participate. But right now I cannot say for sure whether we are going to have a spacewalk or not. We'll probably find this out after Gennady Padelka and Yuri Malenchenko have completed their spacewalk. It depends on how many tasks they will have accomplished. If uh, there is something left for us, then Roma and I will probably finish it. So there is a, a big wish, but I don't know how it will turn out in the end. I hope we'll have one. It, it did it look like you were, you were very eager for that opportunity to go outside, yes? Very much, very much indeed. The International Space Station is getting supplies delivered to it these days by a, a fleet of 
uh, uncrewed cargo ships. There are about a half a dozen of them that should be arriving or departing during the time that you're going to be up there. Could you describe for me what these different cargo ships are, uh, including some of the new uh, commercial cargo ships that are coming from uh, the United States? I'd say for the major part, the cargo vehicles, uh, it's the Russian progress vehicle. Потом вот мне очень понравился по своим габаритам. What I really liked, judging by the size, is the Dragon vehicle. Откровенно говоря, он меня впечатлил. And to tell you the truth, I was really impressed. Вот. Ну, разницы большой я не вижу. I don't see a big difference between Russian cargo vehicles and certain commercial craft. Может, немножко по грузоподъему есть разница, потому что насколько я. There is a difference in terms of size больше могут принести полезные грузы. And how much payload they can take and bring to the station. Я думаю, разница только в том, где они были. I think the only difference is basically where they were manufactured, what the country of origin is. Otherwise, I don't see much difference. With spaceships now coming from, as you say, from a number of different countries, as well as starting now to come from commercial companies, we see private industry and, and sovereign nations all working together in space rather than competing against one another. Is that the way that you think things will continue into the future? I hope it will. Because I think that everything new is uh, good and useful for the space industry. Of course, it's, it's great that we have uh, old cargo vehicles that have been fl flying for, for dozens of years, but we need to improve, we need to modernize, to update, because something new is not always bad. Yes, of course, one of the basic uh, principles in aviation and uh, space industry is that if something is flying, don't touch it. It's good enough to fly, so let's continue flying. But my guess is that right now science has uh, achieved lots of new things and uh, if, say, we have a new unit and the weight, the overall weight of the vehicle reduces and the square footage reduces too, it means that the space that can be allocated for payload increases. And if we talk about uh, man-piloted vehicles, this means uh, the square footage for the room for humans increases too. We'll have more room, it's going to be more comfortable. So if you ask me, I think that cooperation between commercial companies and government companies is a very positive thing. I think so. As you look ahead into the future with all of those involved, how is it that we see that the works is being done now on the International Space Station is going to help prepare all those different entities for the exploration that is going to take place in the future. Да, откровенно говоря, я не политик. Я Frankly speaking, I'm not a politician. I cannot predict anything. В том, что but uh, the advantage I see is that cooperation between different peoples is going to strengthen and uh, increase. Нужно за счет того, что будет больше общения, потому что за счет технических каких-то. Cooperation because of close ties and communication between different people, and this is great.